welcome back to HTC Invitational. I'm your host, Nimsh, and I'm joined by my co-host, Monk. How are you doing, man? We've seen a great game. Yeah, certainly a very epic start for, uh, to start off the day with Nairia versus Ekop. Uh, rather, Nairia versus Forsen. Forsen was down 0-2, but fortunately his lineup of anti-Druid decks was able to defeat Nairia's uh, Druid. So Dad did it, boys, and he'll move on to the tomorrow's matches. But before we go on to the next match, which will be Ekop versus Tice, I want to tell you about this little giveaway that we have going on today oh. and tomorrow. And uh, as you can see from the screen, if you just tweet at HTC, hashtag HTC Esports, um, you'll be entered to have a chance to win one of 12 t-shirts, two tablets, or one phone, a smartphone. And I believe that'll be even like an M9, an HTC One M9, which will, is pretty much like the best phone on the market right now. It came out, I believe, last month. So you'll be pretty much giving like a, getting a top-of-the-line phone if you just tweet at hashtag HTC Esports. Uh, enter a little message. Tell tell them how you're enjoying the tournament. Um, what do you th what do you think about HTC phones? Just anything, and uh, you'll be entered to one one of these great prizes. Um, tablets are also great. You can play Hearthstone on them, and HTC does definitely make some great tablets. And of course, one of twelve T-shirts. I believe those will be the the TSM Cloud Nine. Sure. Yeah, and Team Liquid t-shirts. So those and are awesome, awesome, great. Yeah, definitely a great giveaway. And uh, if you're joining us right now, we are playing the HTC Invitational uh, round of 16. We'll have 16 players. One of them is already eliminated. And uh, you can see the bracket here. Those are our players. They are playing best of fives in a conquest format. So they have to win three games with uh, three different decks to advance. First and already advancing to tomorrow. Uh, we are going to have the top eight, top four, and the final Tomorrow, today, we're going through all those matches. We have seven more matches uh, to show you. The prize pool is $5,000. The winner is going to take $2,500 for himself. And a big shout-out to Trump, uh, allowing us to use his channel. And, uh, yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun here, a lot of good Hearthstone. Yeah, certainly. Uh, Ekop, he hasn't really been into the scene much lately. He hasn't played too many tournaments. But more recently, or most recently, rather, he got a top 10 legend on EU with a 100 deck. And that's certainly a very impressive. Just Ekop, we, we always joke about Ekop just uh, transitioning into Heroes of the Storm, winning yeah. that $1.2 million prize pool, right? But you know what? Ekop still does play some Hearthstone time to time. Oh, yeah. He, he does, play a Hearth, uh, does play Hearthstone. And especially, uh, he was using the new Hunter um, with some good scores. And um, that wasn't a mystery, a good Hunter, right? Uh, the Mr. the Mr. Yagood Hunter. I I don't. I'm not sure. I think Is it might have been Yagood like a. No, that was the all the decks in you. That's that's true. I guess he, <laughs> he made Dragon Warlock and he made uh this new type of Druid, and of course he is like the big rogue player. But some other players make good decks as well. For example, Jab, he got ranked number one legend this morning with a mid-range hunter. And Proto Hyped, he got rank one legend a few days ago with kind of a new hybrid hunter. And judging from the cards uh, in one of these players' hands, I believe that's going to be a hybrid hunter. It's a, pretty much a mid-range hunter with Leopard Gnomes and Wolf Riders. That's such a rare sight. Leopard Gnome and Savannah Sa Hymen in the opening hand. But uh, as you can see, the game has started. We have Eco mulliganing the green page in hand versus Tice uh, having that hunter. And we talked about Eco uh, a bit, like one of the players from Cloud9, but we didn't mention Tice. Who is Tice from which team? Uh, Tice is from. No, I, I can't never pronounce this team. Nehilum? Right? I think it's. Ne Nehilum? Right, there, are two there are two pronunciations, right? There's Nehilum and there's Nehilum. Or Nehilum. I think Sounds it's Nehilum. Right. It's Latin, I believe. Okay, sounds about right. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty good start from Tice, I believe. Tice is going to be playing the hybrid hunter. Uh, and it's going to be really great because this kind of hunter, it has like the strengths and weakness. It has the strengths of mid-range hunter. It has the strengths of phase hunter. But it doesn't have as many weaknesses as fa uh, that phase hunter and mid-range hunter do. For example, like this hunter, because it has high mains, it's going to do pretty well against Warrior, or at least decently against Warrior. Especially this kind of Grim Patron Warrior, that basically it doesn't have many ways to gain armor. It pretty much just has the armor smiths, but those are less reliable than, for example, a guaranteed 5 armor with either Shield Block or Shield Maiden. Yeah, that's certainly true. So, um, this deck is running Hymens mostly because it's like, you do start as, um, as a very fast hunter, 
but then the the face hunter runs out of cards, runs out of steam at some point, and and this hunter when it runs out of steam, it actually doesn't because there are high mains that you can just drop, and your opponent has trouble dealing with them because they use all the other removal on uh, on mid range cards. Uh, but then again, the the green patron um, warrior is very good versus aggro decks. If you're able to draw those cards, if you're able to set up a combo, you might just kill your opponent. And if you get a couple of green patrons, what is Hunter going to do? It's, it's really hard to, to deal with patrons with Unleash the Hounds. Um, explosive Trap might be an answer, but right now we didn't see any Explosive Traps. We only see the Freezing Trap from uh, from Tice. Yep. So, Ekop is able to get back on board, but I think this is still very manageable for Tice. Uh, the problem is going to be the next turn when Ekop plays a Death Spite into Dread Corsair, getting like full control of the board. And uh, he has an Acolyte of Pain as a follow up, and even non mission Venter. So even though he only has four cards in hand, he will be able to draw them. All right, there's an Animal Companion. It's a Huffer. Huffers. Oh, it's... that's probably the best one, I would say. Yeah, but the... what do you think about attacking face here and not trading with the Frotting? Because with the with this play, Death Spite into Corsair, even though Ecop took eight points of damage from the Huffer. There isn't yeah. there is a trap by the way, there is a secret. Do we know what it is? Uh, it's probably freezing trap because this list runs two freezing traps and no other uh, cards. Oh, it's explosive, that's interesting. So definitely a tech choice from Tice. Uh, changing uh, the traps in that deck from not just uh, two freezings, but adding an explosive as well, uh, being geared towards more of the aggro matchup. And unfortunately for Tice, uh, it's going to do quite poorly here because uh, you're just giving your opponent more uh, a bigger Frothing Berserker, essentially, with that explosive trap. Yeah, but there is a second... Uh, well, there is a freezing trap from, uh, from him right now that will stop this Frothing from attacking. But this is the Acolyte of Pain turn, and Ikob is going to draw a couple of cards. He's still searching for the combo parts. Um, not really going to get any armor, so maybe he will be forced to use armor up here. Do you use Death Spy yeah. though? Like, you know that there's a possibility of Explosive Trap, right? Like, you've seen mostly Face Hunter cards. You've seen Explosive Trap, you've seen Leper Gnome. So Ikob might be thinking, this is Explosive. T to be fair though, I I don't think anyone's gonna bring Face Hunter this to this tournament uh, because of all the Grim Patron warriors. Uh, but if they do bring Face Hunter, it's mostly to target other hunters like Mid Range Hunter and the new Hybrid Hunter. Uh, yeah. So I would definitely expect like a potential low Theb on turn five or, and a high mate on turn six. That's just like based on the meta game, what everyone else thinks is really good right now. Uh, Face Hunter is also great versus the Malagos uh, Warlock, but I don't think Malagos Warlock is too popular uh, or the, or popular enough to bring counters to it. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like a fringe deck, kind of a new deck that's just getting some track la traction lately. But you know what? About three or four weeks ago, Grim Patient Warrior was kind of that fringe deck that was getting popular. Yeah. And People were at, like laughing yeah. at it. Yeah, look where it's gotten now. Well, I can only say that everyone started playing it. So, um, let's talk about the matchups, though. We will have Hunter Warlock Warrior versus Hunter Warlock Warrior. Those are the strongest lineups, right? Like, I, all yeah, the strongest classes. Um, yeah, it depends like on your perspective, but they're like the three classes that I think players think are the strongest right now. So possibly Green Patron from both of the players, uh, Midrange Hybrid Hunter from both of the players, and a Zoo. Or Tice might be playing a Handlock. Yeah, I think either is a very good option because Handlock, people are bringing Handlock to tournaments lately be to deal just with the Green Patron Warrior. And I, because I feel like Handlock is actually the best counter in the entire game against, uh, against Green Patron Warrior, short of maybe two Brawl Control Warrior. Yeah, I agree. All right, and back to the game. What is Ecop going to do here? There is the secret. He thinks this is explosive. He doesn't want to really waste um, Death's Bite charge. But the line of play might be just attacking with the with the minion here. Uh, trading with Pilot Shredder makes sense. Uh, he's going to test for Freezing Trap, and if this is explosive, then he's going to use the Frotting. But time's running out. 
a cop, you have to do your turn pretty quickly. Is he going to get roped? Rope cop. And there is a freezing trap animation going on. Can he still play the Courser and armor up? Yeah. There we go. Getting uh, some even more damage onto himself. So the warrior actually now is kind of a precarious situation with uh, only 16 or rather 14 points of health. And as a phase hunter, or like at least you have phase hunter elements in your deck, you're probably going to be pretty scared. As, the as warrior a warrior. Comes. Yeah, as a warrior, because you only have 14. There are no shield blocks in this deck, and um, there are still ways, like Tysk is the ways to deal with the board. Quick shots. I'm always thinking, like, I don't want to cast quick shot when I have full hand, or like if I have cards in my hand. I want to draw a card and then deal three points of damage, but is there a good way to deal with the frauding? Like, you can, you can silence it with Iron Beak, but is that really a play? I think like the 2-1 Murloc will attack into the 3-2 because that's um, that's good value and you should be happy about that. Yeah, it's almost but... certainly going to happen. Like if you think about this deck though, like what else are you going to silence? You've already seen two Dread Corsairs and also I, I guess some Grim Patron versions, they do run Sludge Belcher, but it's certainly not a guaranteed. And I think Tice, having done his research, will probably know exactly the, uh, the exact deck are the tech choices that Ekop will be bringing in his great patron warrior. So he might just not be playing around Sludge Belcher here. Yeah, that's true. Also, like, even if there is a Sludge Belcher, Ekop didn't draw that many cards, and uh, he didn't play Sludge Belcher before, so now it will be, like, um, it will be a gamble, like, is he going to top deck one? What is Ekop looking for, though? Like, he has um, the inventors, uh, he's he's uh, he's trying to decide, I think, whether he wants a whirlwind first or play the uh, no mission mentor first, or, or even just play the frothing berserker. That's also an option. Um, because if he plays the no mission mentor and then he whirlwinds for a full board clear, that uh, that might just be a little inefficient because it brings his no mission mentor down to three HP, which means something like a quick shot or. Uh, an eagle horn bow can kill it. Oh man, is he going to execute Mad Scientist? Is that actually a play? Yeah, it's certainly possible. Whirlwinds, execute Mad Scientist. First play Throtting, then Whirlwind, then execute Mad Scientist. And then attack to spring the secrets. So, do you actually Whirlwind here is kind of the question. I don't think so. I think because he only has one Whirlwind effect, and he used one Whirlwind before, I believe, and a Death Spite. Did he use Whirlwind before? Or was it like Death Spite only? Uh, I believe it was just Death Spite. Alright. But still, it's only one uh, effect in hand, so if he gets an Acolyte or even a Green Patron, he wants to have that Whirlwind. I'm not sure how scared he is of damage here, but there is a lot of damage coming from Tice, and he is going to be able to draw a card from Quick Shots. But well, maybe not this turn, like, you still want to use the Hero Power. Yeah, just gotta, at this point, you have, you're so low on cards that you have to get every point of uh, damage in as possible. And just fitting in hero powers is exactly what you want. Um, Do whirlwind much, first now, though. I, I would like to see a whirlwind first, yeah. I'd also like to see an attack in, I guess. Alright, normally you could also frotting and whirlwind, but then you are so low, like you're at 7. So we have to consider that after you whirlwind, if there is a hero power and... Uh, well, double quick shots, not really. What what is going to kill you? Arcing Golem. Did Ecop see any midrange cards? Freezing trap. Other than that, like this hunter is is just a face hunter from the cards he's seen, right? Um yeah, there's I don't believe we've seen like piloted shredders in this deck. There was example. one shredder. There was there one was shredder. A shredder. Okay. So at least it's more of a mid rangey kind of deck. You know, there are versions uh, of this deck that curve only to Lotheb, for example. Um, Game King finished number one legend on Euro the European server last year, or last season, rather. And uh, his version, it pretty much just goes to Lotheb and just has a lot of, like, face Hunter-ish cards. All right, so here using the quick shots, he needs to draw something good. Lepronome is not great. It is providing two points of damage, though. And Ecop is getting lower and lower. 
Uh, right now, he might be forced to use the, the hero power every turn. Oh, Armor oh, Smith. Armor Smith is amazing. That's the exact best draw possible in his deck. He desperately needed life. And now he's going to add a bit of... Uh, so this might be the last... One of the last turns for Dice to get that damage done. Yeah, exactly. The, the armor can just build up um, over the course of the next few turns. The, the thing is, like, Ekop, besides... Uh, he actually doesn't have any activators for the armor smith. So if Tice doesn't play anything in the next few turns, uh, he can just keep hero powering. And anytime he draws into like a kill command, it can be potentially lethal. Yeah. Or Look even at a those executes, second quick though. shot. Those executes are, the, are just collecting dust in Ekop's hand. All right, so simple kill command is going to finish the game. A simple quick shot. Uh, Wolf, Wolf Rider, Arcane Golem, just any points of damage. And unfortunately, that's not going to be it. I don't think you even play the Snipe Juggler here. It just gives your opponent uh, more chances to gain armor. So it's, we're going to see a, probably a Hero Power Pass. Hero Power Pass is pretty safe. Ecop needs a Whirlwind. Um, this is 5, 8 points of damage. Warsong is not really doing much. I think you just... Go for draw? I I'm not sure what drawing can do. I think at this point, you want to set up a two-turn lethal. Is there any way you can do that? Um, three, four, five. I don't even believe so with the fr with like charging the Frothing Berserker. You still don't really d set up a three uh, two-turn lethal. Well, you lethal have, what, like five, eight, right? Next turn, you need to de deal ten. So not really. Like You st still need something else, like not with the cards you have in your hand. So going for draws, but then Anish the Hounds will be lethal as well. Oh, it was amazing. It will stop the Hounds at least. Yeah, it stops Hounds and it stops uh, an Eagle Horn Bow from being lethal. Yeah. So that was an amazing draw. But then still, Kill Command, Quick Shot is lethal. And um, is there lethal next turn? Not really. Not yet. Oh, there is oh. a Kill Command for Tice. Eco will surely be disappointed. Look at his face. He's clapping. Clapper. <laughs> Both players uh, sh show their appreciation of this wonderful game that we play that is Hearthstone. That was actually really close. Um, Ecop, was, Ecop almost got it in the back, but you know, like, Ty still had double kill command, and um, this deck is poised to get that kill command at some point. At some point, you are destined to draw into kill command and finish your opponent. And if your opponent has three points of life left, it's, you know, only fitting. Yeah, I mean, there were so many. Car uh, ways out or so many draws that were good cards for Tice at the end. Quick shot, yeah, kill command. The turn before he had Eagle Horn Bow, Wolf Rider, Arcane Golem that sometimes it's just inevitable. And also even if Tice hadn't draw something uh, like a high value card, Ekop still would have had a pretty good or rather Tice would have had a pretty good chance in the next game because uh Tice wasn't able because or because Ekop wasn't able to finish the game off on that turn. Yeah. Alright, so Tice is getting a one to oh lead. Uh, winning the first game. Game number two, Green Patron versus Green Patron Monk. This is one of the best matchups right now. Oh man, what is good in the matchup? Do you want many Green Patrons? Can you use Whirlwinds? What is happening? Is frauding good? Can you set up like a OTK turn? Yeah, exactly. This is such a complicated matchup. A lot of the times it's determined by who can get like the first big Green pat Patron playoff because uh, funnily, funnily enough, Green Patron Warriors can't deal with Green Patrons well from the opposing side. But what they can do, let, let's say your opponent sets up like five or six Green Patrons, you can actually just charge a, a two Frothings into your opponent, for example, and OTK them. Yeah, yeah, it's so weird. Because you kind of want to have minions on board, and this is a race, so you want to play those minions who want to deal damage. But then if you have small minions, if your opponent has the Green Patrons and you have those Nomish Inventors and War Songs, he can produce um, Patrons for himself. But if you're winning with those Patrons, as you said, you can play double Frothing, maybe Whirlwinds and charge Froddings into, uh, into the face. Weapons are really important. Like you want weapons, you want to kill whatever is being played by your opponent and get some edge right there. All right. Also, like the small differences in decks, like who's playing Numish Inventors, who's playing Pilot to Treaders. There is a commanding shout for Ecop. Um, Inner Rage. Also, not everybody's playing that card. Who gets the better Torison and when? Both players yeah. do have Torison right now. Yeah, Torison definitely a key card in this matchup. 
exactly what you want to be able to be the first player that start off to start off all these like brilliant combos. We see a, a Gnomish Inventor on turn three instead of the Frothing Berserker. And I definitely like that because Frothing and Berserker is kind of like your win condition. You want to save it until you can charge it into your opponent's space, for example. Yeah. Also for e -Cop, I can see that uh, double Courser with the weapon. So if you get so many minions on board, it might be hard for Thais to, to deal with everything. And you can actually do it this turn, right? Like just weapon up and double Courser. It's, it seems just too good to pass. And how is Warrior going to, to react to that? Like, you will not definitely consider Brawl. But Ecom still doesn't know which deck is he playing against, right? Did he uh, see any yeah. cards? Yeah, this can uh, be it, Cultural Warrior. Exactly, it's just armor up, armor up. And just judging from that, I would say it's more likely for it to be Control Warrior than Grim Patron Warrior. Uh, we see the first Death Spite here from Tice. And it's going to be an excellent draw, exactly what he needed. In this matchup, it's kind of funny. You actually sometimes you actually just attack your opponent with a fire war axe. Yeah. Because you want to get that extra damage in. It's very similar to like Miracle Rogue back in the day, where each point of damage matters, because you do eventually, at a certain point in the game, you go for that OTK. And it's sometimes you actually never uh, don't even armor up. Like it's a it's a question because you if you if you run double battle rage and most of the people run du double battle rage if you have battle rage in your hand you might not armor up for your opponent to deal damage so that you can actually cycle battle rage. But I do yeah. think like armoring up is important because it is a race. So a small amount amount of life will matter in the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, very interesting point that you kind of want to keep your opponent at full HP kind of for that battle rage. So I guess in that sense, uh, Tice is winning this game. <laughs> yeah, Ecop is not going to get a good battle rage here. But you know what uh, Tice can do? He's going to get off the first Grim Patron Warrior, or the first Grim Patron off. He he has like a couple of interesting options here. Either going for like Four just patrons. a whole, uh, even I... more, because you can you can interrage it as well. So you can so actually you can... get, yeah, so you, you double this, then it goes to four. Then you can even use a whirlwind. Double whirlwind and uh, death spite as well. Yep. Oh so man, everyone, much... get in here! So pretty good, I would say. Pretty good turn six play. Uh, fill your board up with patrons. A grim situation for Ecop, is it, or is it not? How do you deal with this board now? Um. I guess you can throw an unstable goal in and just uh, give your opponent even more patience. That's certainly an option. Imagine that Ecop had the frothing instead of um, Inventor. Well, it wouldn't change that much, I guess. But now it's it's looking really awkward. Like, if you go for Torison, you're making your plays better. But there is no way to deal with this board. Like, if he attacks into free twos. He can kill one of the free freeze, and that's it. Like, I think this is still okay though, because uh, Tice actually has no other way to activate these patrons, and Ekop will be able to clear three of them this turn. True, but then free remain, and uh, Torison might be executed. A cloud of pain is not doing much, but it can draw a card if needed. I think what Tice is gonna say here is, I see your Grim Patron, or I see your Emperor Thorazin, and uh, exactly, he's gonna play. It was a good play. I will just mirror it. All right, a true mirror match. So many dwarfs. Oh yeah, I guess so. Do you remember, like, in um, I think last year, um, Yorkcast, they tried to build a dwarf deck, and it was such a bad deck. But now, if you build a dwarf deck, it might actually work. I wonder, like, what deck, if you, you could only, like, put human creatures in, or orc creatures in, or torrents in, what deck would actually be the best? It's probably, I think like, Green a... Patron, Green Patron, Warrior, Dwarfs, all other class decks. Or race I like decks. That. I like that. Well, I mean, you can't play Warsong Commander in your Green Patron, Warrior deck if you only put Dwarves in. True. Unless you get a very um, good argument that it is kind of like a Dwarf. Green one. Okay, so what can Ecom uh, do here? Um, there is 
the one free. He got Warsong. Uh, this gives him a chance to charge with his minions, but this might might not be it yet. Um, he will be able to kill Torison. He has to kill Torison. If Tor Torison stays on board for a couple more turns, it's so devastating. Yeah, he actually can't kill Thorson without summoning um, more Grim Patrons. So that's kind of funny in that sense. So yeah, Thorson will stay on the board for one more turn, and I certainly wouldn't want to be Ekop here. Um, that being said, he actually has some really good OTK potential. Like you have, fun. you have Warsong, you have a Grim Patron, you have an Unstable Ghoul, Commanding Shout, and Frothing Berserker. This is like those are actually like all the pieces of the like combo pieces that you need. Uh, what would make it better maybe would be like a whirlwind, for example. Yeah, he needs a whirlwind probably. Well, he has a unstable goal anyway. But uh, so what he what Ecop needs is more minions on board, and then possibly frauding might get lethal. I think uh, Tice will know this though, and he'll kind of try to play around that, play as few minions as possible perhaps. Well, we are going to see if he's going to extend. Yeah, he just keeps three minions on board. So this seems it's it's not going to be enough for Ecop. At this moment, he will be able... Oh, double frauding. Wait, can he play everything? Five, seven... Uh, let's count double frauding just in case. Six, eight mana, so he can go... All right, so he won't be able to play uh, a stable goal. He will not have enough mana. Right? Uh, yeah. Alright. Get in here, number one. Get in here again. And this pretty much just cleared the board. Clears the All board. Right. Yeah, Commanding Shout's not a card that we typically see in this deck. It's kind of like, I would say like about 30% of players play it. But it's certainly paying uh, Ekop in dividends here. And now oh, he's yeah. the one with the board advantage. So how much damage is there? Um, Tice needs eight points. Of, eight points of damage. He has. He doesn't have a whirlwind effect. Is there enough? He just Four, has to charge the eight. like everything in basically. Yeah, five eight. Yeah, he exactly has lethal here. Uh, just play all the minions beside Gromash, and he has um, eleven points of damage with the weapon. It's pretty, it's pretty sick. So again, Ikop was really close to, to winning, but now he knows that uh, there is enough points of damage for Tice. And Tice ga takes game number two, extending the lead over Ikop. Tice just needs one more win to take the series and eliminate Ikop from the tournament. Yeah, pretty amazing there. Like, all the games are actually just really close. And Ikop just lost both these first two games by... Like, just a th hair's length, pretty much. Yeah. Like, each game, if Ekop had one more turn to live, he'd have, he would have kind of won in the next turn, right? Do you remember who had the coin? And um, Because in other card games, there's always a debate. Like, who has an edge? The player who is starting the game or the player who is going second? And uh, in the beginning of Hearthstone, we were always talking about who has the coin has an advantage because there is an extra card, there is a coin, you can do stuff with it. But maybe right now, with all those tempo decks, the player who is starting uh, is is basically winning because he is the first to kill his opponent. Yeah. It was uh, Ekop that had the coin because he played the turn three and turn four no mission venture. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you could definitely make that argument. For example, like Tyus was uh, able to get like the big turns early on. Like for example, that Grim Patron uh, turn on turn six where he summoned seven Grim Patrons, and then he was able to. Uh, he was able to get like a Emperor Thorazane out pretty quickly the turn after. Yeah. So still pretty good, I would say. All right. So um, now we are going to see Warlock versus Warlock. This is Zoo versus some kind of Handlock, I believe, with the Molten Giants. Yeah. Um, so there's, it's either, I would say, either a Demon Handlock or just a Standard Handlock. And I kind of like Standard Handlock these days rather than the Demon Handlock because it just feels like Mountain Giants have become a little bit better with the advent of uh, with Grim Patron decks. Because with the Mountain Giants, like what you're really afraid of are BGHs, but yeah. Grim Patrons, they don't run BGH. In fact, the only big removal they have is two executes. They don't even have Shield Slams. So uh, Mountain Giants are more likely to stick to the board. 
and they're more likely to get just huge value plays compared to, let's say, a void caller in turn four, for example. Same with the zoo. So like if Green Patron, Zoo, and Midrange Hunter are, are the most popular decks and the most powerful decks, then Handlock might be one of the best counters, right? Yeah, exactly. It's why uh, like it was rated so highly at the power ranks last week. Like I think it's been like the it's I think Handlock is the best now than it has been in the last two or three months. Oh yeah, it kind of disappeared. So it's like Handlock is this deck that's really stable and really good, but sometimes the meta game is just killing it, and you can't play the deck. But then when the meta game shifts, it becomes again one of the most powerful decks. Yeah, we, we and saw. Also right uh, now, yeah, go ahead. Right, right now with all those warlock archetypes, like you know, when you see warlock, like what is it going to be? Is it going to be a demon lock, handlock, zoo, or or Maligus warlock? It, it's always tough to really. Um, guess what are you playing against, um, and then it decide. This will decide your mulligan and your strategy. Even like after seeing a couple of cards, you sometimes still don't know which warlock are you facing. Yeah, uh, I would say like a pretty excellent hand for Tice at the moment. I think he kind of made the read that a cup would be playing Zoo, so he decided to keep a Molten Giant, for instance. And not only does he have Molten Giant, he has Hellfire on turn four. He has Ancient Watchers. He has Sun Fury Protector, and even a Dark Bomb to follow that up. He can even follow up the Molten Giants with um, an anti heal bot, so pretty much everything is going exactly as planned for Tice. Even the Void Walker, um, this is a great opening for <laughs> Handlock because you know that Void Walker is not going to deal uh, that much damage in the course of a couple of turns. So when you see a Void Walker being played by Zoo instead of Flame Imp, you are happy about that. Like Flame Imp, like right now Tice had uh, three turns to just tap, or, or basically two turns to just tap and, um, and draw the cards. Also, seeing a tap on turn three from uh, from Warlock is definitely good for you. Yeah, exactly. Um, she's gonna be playing the egg here just to play around Hellfire. Uh, certainly a valiant at attempt to play around it, but to be honest, though, Imp Gang Boss actually would be pretty get good against Hellfire as well. It's kind of like a, it's kind of one of the cards that made the Handlock matchup slightly better, I'd say. Be just because like your opponent's Hellfire on turn 4 isn't as good against a turn 3 Imp Gang boss. Yeah, so now you do have the Nerubian Neru Egg and you have the Imp Gang boss. But um, still, I do believe that Handlock will be favored in this matchup. And seeing double Doomguard in Ikov's hand. Yeah, but this is, not, this is not really a zoo, right? This is more of a Handlock with Voidwalkers. No, I mean uh, like uh, Demon Lock, Demon Lock with Void Walkers. Yeah, exactly. And... All right, so um, is this time to Hellfire? Yeah, I like the Mortal Cool here to start it off. I don't think this board is uh, like threatening enough for a Hellfire yet. Oh, Al, that's a really good one. I think you can you can just Al the Nerubian Egg. Maybe throw up another Ancient Watcher. Just play it nice and slow. Oh wow, play it even more slow, Tice. He's uh he's really playing towards that Molten that Giant. Mount Molten Giant, exactly. He sees oh. Ekop as a slow hand, so that's exactly uh it, 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 this actually is like a really good position for Tice because he has like all the answers, and well, Ekop isn't putting that much pressure on him. But on the other hand, like he played that Ancient Watcher, and he might be forced to Hellfire this turn. He's not afraid of Morganis, that's for sure. Next turn, Ecop can bring 9 points of damage with Doomguard and um, Power of Whelming. So what is Tice going to do here? Like, counting ni um, 9 points of damage, he is kind of, kind of like on 4 points of health. You can actually just uh, perhaps consider playing Molten, Sun Fury, and then Mortal Coil. Um, you might be even more greedy than that and fit a tab in between. That's certainly a possibility. Well, you, you probably just start with the Coil. Yeah. Getting that Imp. Yeah, I like it. It's a powerful turn. Yeah, there's other options like Owling is... You, you might consider Owling, you might consider Dark Bombing the, the Dire Wolf Alpha. Um, if you want to be like supremely greedy and just try to get a free Molten Giant, for instance. 
But you do have to consider, like, what can my opponent possibly have? And I think Power Overwhelming and Doom Guard at, are at the top of your threat list right now. Yeah, also because Ika wasn't really playing cards, so you might be thinking, hey, he has kind of something like a combo. Maybe he has Arcane Golem, Power. Um, people still play the, this to, in, in tournaments to surprise their opponents. So he's going for the Hellfire to uh, almost clear the board, set up... Wait, this is... this is over. They actually didn't count for Power of Overwhelming Doomguard. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> He well, had a couple plays, but he went for a dangerous one. He was greedy from the very beginning of this game. Yeah, exactly. I think every turn he played like as greedy as possible. But in the end, it just didn't turn out for him, I guess. I think he was like, yeah, overall he was just too greedy. Because his hand actually was like just really amazing. Egg Cop's draw wasn't that great. It had very little pressure. But it, it, it was kind of like a hand that was like kind of clunky. And I think Tice should have made like some kind of uh, read into that, that the hand was clunky and maybe played around that. But we're going to see game number four. It's going to be uh, Handlock yet again against, I would say, probably a hybrid hunter from Eka because that's what he has been playing on stream lately. Oh, yeah. He was really favoring that and being happy. Um, he advanced from what like, ranks Legend 600 to la rank Legend Top 10 with this deck. Um, a very powerful deck. We've seen Trump playing Hunter uh, before as well and getting yeah. really high ranks with it. So, Yeah, um, Trump actually, he qualified for the ESL Legendary Series Finals um, with that Hunter deck. And after and, and Protohyped, um, a player that you might not know too much if you're like more of a casual Hearthstone fan, but Protohype got number one, ranked number one legend with this uh, hybrid Hunter. So actually, there's a, a Defender of Argus in this deck. Interesting, and um, and even a uh, even oh King Mokla. Are we gonna see some mill action from Ekop? <laughs> because now he has Makla. Still, um, this looks pretty good. Even though Makla can be answered with uh, BGH, double banana, banana the Makla and BGH it. But then there is not enough mana for for Tice to do it. Right so now it's 5-5 five, five just sitting there. So this Defender of Argus, that's an interesting one. And there's actually two types of decks that Defender of Argus could be in. Um, it could be just in a standard mid-range hunter, like we've seen uh, Nyman use Defender of Argus in mid-range hunter's decks. But it also could just be in the hybrid hunter, and we saw Game King, for example, use Defender of Argus in his hybrid hunter deck uh, to, get, to finish rank 1 Legend on the European server last season. Are any of those hunter decks running dragons as well? <laughs> Unfortunately, Nimsha, uh, dragon hunter is not a thing. Oh, come on. We've seen one lately played by Ties of Time. We might see it today. It's true. Okay. So, um, how do you think this, this particular hunter with Defender of Argus, oh, someone I mean as well, uh, how is it going to fare against uh, Handlock? Like, there is no cl clear... Clear, board clear in, um, in Tice's hand. Well, you know what? Tice does have uh, Banana, or rather, uh, Owl into Banana here to clear the King Mukla. Pretty a creative play, I would say. I always um, like seeing it, but then again, he doesn't have the the coin, right? Yeah. Yeah, the, so the Silence and Banana is much better. It's kind of funny here. <laughs> Ekop yeah. has no really good way of dealing with this. He has to kind of unleash here. Does Kirkoman help? Yeah, but we even with Unleash, like he can't get rid of the Owl, and the Owl will be able to trade into the Piloted Shredder, which is, again, very unfortunate. This is but one yeah, of the you're... best uses of Bananas I've seen, actually. He was able to, to trade Makla without um, losing his minions, and then he actually buffed his Owl to threaten the Piloted Shredder. Choosing not to kill it. Is this the Belcher turn? Turn 5 Belcher, yeah, sure. It feels like in Hearthstone we kind of joke about, oh, it's turn 5, let's play a Belcher. It's turn 6, let's play Emperor. And turn 7, of course, Dr. Boom. Yeah. But, uh, very, well, very often, those are pretty true. Yeah, that's true, basically. Very good cards. So Belcher is green. But then again, you also have Lothlep sometimes on 5. 
Freezing Trap, not that useful versus Handlock. Yeah, you, you asked previously like how this matchup is, and I probably have to give the favorite to the mid-range Hunter. Um, it, it's allowed to put a lot of threats on the board, plus it has a lot of bursts as well. So just kind of like the best of both worlds. And I, I would even go to, uh, as far to say that maybe this deck is even better than Phase Hunter against Handlock. Because you have enough time to actually get those heal commands and um, set up a board, you do have a lot of the rattles. By the way, this turn looks like a, looked like a high main um, because it was turn six. But then just using kill command here and um, Defender Vargas is um, making a board better. Like normally, you would like to keep kill command as a finisher versus handlock, but uh, getting more board value and not losing everything to a simple belcher uh, makes it much better. And you can still follow up with the high main next turn. Yeah, not only that, but I think Ekop made the read last turn that his opponent didn't have AoE. Because I think if Tice had AoE on the previous turn, he would have definitely gone for it. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, he still doesn't have it, so he's trying to draw into something here. Um, Molten Giant, Hellfire, anything like that would be good. But uh, unfortunately, is pretty good. It's good, but he definitely would have preferred something else. And now he's in a tenuous position where I think his opponent can make the read that there's no Molten Giants. So at this point, Ekop can afford to go all in here. Yeah, Ekop is in a very good position now. Just um, just pushing. Nothing really for Ties even next turn. He will be able only to turn up a 4-5. If he gets, like, even if he gets a Shadow Flame, it's not amazing. He won't be able to deal with the high main. Yeah, and I think... Uh, now, yeah, go ahead. I, I mean, especially. like, especially now with Siphon Soul kind of out of meta game, like... Warlock's not really playing Siphon, so Hymen becomes even more dangerous for, for Handlock decks. Oh, it's quite interesting that he maybe wants to go for the Eaglehorn Bow instead of the Hymen. Hymen, like, at first, it does seem like the clear play, but the problem is, like, the Sludge Belcher is so awkward to deal with. Like, what minions do you, do you actually run into the Sludge Belcher? Um, I think you do run the Mad Scientist and um, Defender Vargas. And you keep the free two. Well, you, you do kill the one two token, so you keep a free yeah. one on board. I guess the problem with that play is you leave your opponent um, up to something like a mortal coil, which is going to be pretty good. Um, and it's going to like give your opponent essentially another uh, good out. I hope Ekop got those attacks in, and it looks like he did. Yeah, he got it. And he also got a, a second secret, which is, I believe, Explosive Trap. Snake trap. Oh, it's a snake trap. Okay, so is there anything that Tice can do to not lose next turn? Um, there is nine points of damage plus five, fourteen. So yeah, a heal bot would actually save him. Yeah, but it's not really changing the the board position here. Uh, he can also play uh, Watcher, turn it up. That's four mana. Is he forced to play a 4-2 as well, like a BGH here? And uh, just play BGH, Ancient Watcher, Tona both. He'll have some kind of board, force the free one to trade into the 4-2. Four, four oh, he's just going to play Dr. Boom and die. So again, Ty's going for a play that's um, a play to win. Yeah. But not a well, play to... I think at this point, though, like he probably wasn't going to win that game. So he had to rely on his opponent on not having burst. So... Um, compared to last game, I think this was like definitely a better line of play than where Tice basically in the last uh, match in his handlock versus Zoo, he kind of was like, okay, I'm in a pretty good position, but I'm going to take another risk here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right now, the, the playing Dr. Boom uh, made a little sense. Uh, he was so much behind that he had he was forced to make a powerful play and hope that he opponent, uh, his opponent doesn't have anything to deal with that. And uh, maybe make a turnaround uh, from that point. But uh, Monk, we are here again. Game number five, where Tice was winning 2 0 versus Ecop. Ecop climbing back, slowly clawing back to, to take it. Green Patron versus Handlock. How yeah, is the I, matchup? I would say, like, pretty good for Handlock these days, especially because um, Handlock these days, they're running double Hellfire, they're running one Shadow Flame. So, really nice to deal with Green Patron boards. Also, like if you play Mountain Giants, again, like we said, there's no BGH in this Warrior deck. So it's going to be really hard for the Warrior to clear boards, clear those Mountain Giants, for instance. Oh, yeah. And also, like, the Dark Bomb is just killing Green Patrons. So what is Green Patron going to do? Draw cards, I believe. You need to draw uh, all the combo pieces. 
and um, get some damage early, but avoid the Molten Giant, right? And then you do need Execute for a possible early Giant or maybe a Twilight Drake. I think Execute is really important in this matchup from the Warriors' perspective. Yeah, you basically need to get rid of your opponent's first big threat and then hope he doesn't have a second one. That's pretty much how you win in this matchup. Fireworks to face. Is that a play? I think you can uh, perhaps equip the Fireworks in order to set up for a Dread Corsair the next turn, or even Dread Corsair in here. I kind of like coin. keeping the yeah. coin though, um, because it, it lets you set up more combos later on into the game. But yeah, I guess so th this lets you like, see the, the problem here is like you possibly give your opponent a Dark Bomb opportunity, and it just gives them something to do on turn three. Instead of you just tapping. Of you stop the tap, kind of, right? Yeah. And at this right, point, so like, yeah, it, like, the, I, he didn't get too much use out of that Dread Corsair. There is the Molten Giants. Um, first threat, Twilight Drake. I, I think, like, Tice still has a very good hand with uh, that Twilight Drake that has to be answered right now. There is the um, Slash Belcher on the next turn, which is great versus Green Patron. And Torison. Uh, Molten, Samtons, Hellfire. Tice has all the tools to stop Ecop's uh, advance, but uh, Ecop doesn't really have much here. He needs to draw into those cards. Yeah, he's, he has certainly ample opportunities, though, to draw in those cards with the amount of card draw that he has with uh, the Acolyte of Paint, with the Commanding Shout, for instance. Also, the fact that he got... Um, that fireworks into Death Spite, and Death Spite is not online. Normally, you would love to kill uh, such Belcher with a Death Spite uh, with one charge and finish it off. But here, I guess he can um, use the Whirlwind, cycle the Whirlwind, still draw two cards from Acolyte, kill the Belcher, and then draw two cards from Battle Rage. Yeah, that's true. So, a total of four cards can be drawn from uh, Ekop in this turn. Pretty good deal, I would say. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So would you go for Battle Rage now? Like, uh, attack Belcher, then uh, Battle Rage? Yeah, I don't mind two cards for Battle Rage. I think that's a fair deal. Two mana for two cards. Uh, kind of like a cheaper Arcane Intellect. I would say that's pretty fair. Yeah, it's a great card. Do you remember the times when it was unnerved? And just drawing cards for every damaged uh, character on the board? Do yeah, that was... That was like the the pinnacle of warrior, you could say. The the thing is like that card was so good, but actually the rest of warrior wasn't good enough, or people didn't know how to play warrior at that time. That uh, warrior actually wasn't that strong, even though it had such an imbalanced battle rage at, at the time. True. All right, so great Torison here. Um, six points of mana just in one turn, but this ties his hand good enough. Yeah, he has none of like the active threats that he would really want, and um, both players are going to play Thorzen. Neither currently is able to to deal with the other Thorzen without trading here. And I think like as the handlock player, you're definitely more scared of this your opponent's Thorzen rather than like you want to keep your own Thorzen because your opponent is the player that has like the combo opportunity. So you don't yeah. want to give him like too much combo opportunity. Too many free combos, for instance. And this, uh, going into turn 7 with an Emperor Thor's NB played, I think this is actually pretty bad for Tice in the sense that there's a slime on the board, which is exactly what you don't want. But at least there's two Ancient Watchers, and there's actually no way for Ekop to get past those two Ancient Watchers with Grand Patrons. Well, actually, if he goes, um, attacks with Death Spite into one Ancient Watcher, then he has a f fantastic turn next turn, which might be OTK. Because right now he deals 4 damage to 1, and then next turn he can attack into the second one, killing both of Watchers, and dealing damage, having the Whirlwind effect to all the minions. So if by that time he has double throwing on board, he can use the Whirlwind as well uh, to get even more buffs. And uh, Frodings are like 4 points of mana. I would like I would not like playing Frodings here. I, would, I think I would just like attacking to one of the Ancient Watchers and maybe just armor up. And set up an OTK next turn, if possible. How much damage would that be? Uh, you will have basically around 
seven minions on board with Taskmaster. Let's say six minions. With six minions, it's plus 12. And uh, then there's four. That's 16 points of damage. Oh, Defender of Argus. I would say that's a very good draw, actually. Because it lets you kill off the... And not only does it let you kill off the Frothing Berserker, but it lets you get rid of the slime, which you actually don't want because it enables patrons. It also lets you buff the Ancient Watcher out of uh, Death Spite range. Yeah, that's really important. And uh, Ikob obviously doesn't have the worst on yet, so OTK was out of the question, but still, he can draw into one. All right, so here, he's getting those green patrons, I believe. Yeah, four green patrons at least on this turn. Um, throwing in the cruel taskmasters, that could be even more. I think that you can use taskmaster to actually kill the, the watcher. Oh, I think you actually just use a whirlwind to kill the watcher. I mean the five. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, you can just use the whirlwind here. So attack, like play Green Patron, attack into the 5-6, then use the Whirlwinds. Yeah, you, you kind of play into Hellfire though, but I mean against the Handlock, what else can you do? Um, unfortunately for Ekop though, Tice has two Hellfires in his hand. Yeah, Ekop needs kind of like um OTK setup. But you know, he still has Grommash in the deck. Or does he? Have we seen Grommash from Ekop? I believe so. We've seen one from Tice for sure. I mean, we've seen so many Patron Warriors, um, even though <laughs> it's the second match of the day, that the, the, the decks kind of like meld together in some way. So, uh, Ekop, is he going to play the second Cruel Taskmaster? Don't believe so. Oh, he actually. Okay, he does go for it. He uses it to kill off that uh, Ancient Watcher. He saves his Whirlwind, I think, because he wants to save it for uh, combo potential. Yeah, like even even for frauding. Okay, but still, Ecop. Um, well, Tice has a great situation here. Just uh, a sack phase with 2 2, Hellfire. Uh, he even tops. Yeah, fair enough. And I mean, this is probably the best Hellfire that. One of the best Hellfires that I think we're ever going to see in this tournament. Yeah, it's super It's super strong. Um, Tanks gets down to 16, though. Ikop not really having options to deal that damage. Not yet, at least. Um, there is a Taunt Giver and a heal for Tice, so Tice is pretty safe. There is a Green Patron. There's a but Green Patron, but no, unfortunately no Warsong Commander yet. He really needs to draw into one of his chargers. Do you cycle um, Commanding Shout here? That's a good question. I think... The thing is, like, you, I don't know if you're going to get that much value from Commanding Shout in this deck. You, I guess you need it to uh, like kill off Giants, right? If your opponent yeah, throws down yeah. Taunt Giants on the field. So, yeah, I don't mind saving it at all. But he needs that Warson Commander right now. All right, so now it's back to Tice with so many options, ten points of ma uh, of mana. What do you do here? Uh, you are seeing frauding. It can possibly be lethal if you are not careful. Yeah, do you are you scared enough to actually silence this frauding? Is the real question. It's a really awkward turn because you want to kind of play molten, but then you would like to tap as well. All right, he's going for a tap. So he might play just Molten, tone up the Molten. Well, yeah, Twilight. I like Twilight, Molten, and then Sun Fury. Yeah, it's, it's super powerful. So now Ecop definitely needs that Commanding Shout. Uh, well, not Commanding Shout, like the, Warsong. the Warsong. If he draws Warsong Commander, that's actually lethal. It's kind of funny there. He got Battle Rage. That's actually amazing. Um, if you battle rage into a war song, do you win? Or you can even commanding shout into a war song. <laughs> it is possible. Wait. Oh, uh, yeah, I believe so. Like with so many minions on board and the whirlwind still being in his hand. Wait, I can you can you patron whirlwind, battle rage, and then uh, draw into a war song? Even that's a win. 
Yeah. Oh my god. Agop's gonna draw at least, uh... Wait, if All you right, play so... the Armorsmith, then Warsong isn't a win either. Yeah, oh my it, god. It's, it's not now. Without, well, with Armorsmith, like, even without Armorsmith, he wouldn't be able to play the Warsong. Now he's just going to replenish his whole hand. Drawing into seven, six cards. No, five, uh, five cards, actually. Oh, execute. It's a good draw, but unfortunately, it's just not enough here. Yeah, but he's out of uh, mana. He will be exactly. able to kill the giant, though. Three I like attacking here. into that uh, Twilight Drake there. I think yet again, this is a, seems to be another Hellfire turn. And that's actually a second Frothing and a second Green Patron, right? Yeah, even though like that seemed to be a good turn for Ekop, I'm not actually sure he can win right now because he lost his like four of the biggest threats unless he runs Grom. Like if if you see two Frothings and two Patrons, like you're not scared at all of this Green Patron deck. Yeah, that's true. Right now, like what can Ekop do? Just charge those Acolytes of Pain into Tice's face? Kill him with I weapons? Mean... Throw the weapons at him? I mean, you laugh, but uh, we have seen Acolytes of Pain being like that one damage that people need to win the game. That's true. Every point of damage counts. So are we going to see the next 14 turns? Ecob will do everything to protect his Acolyte of, uh, of Pain and do one damage every turn till Tyze dies in pain. Well, it's going to be 11 turns now. It's getting closer and closer. Well, Ecop is getting some health here. So, what do you think about not attacking into that armor smith first? Uh, I think the the warlock. You mean with the twilight drake? I think the war yeah. like the warrior like really. It doesn't matter too much. I think either way because you're not gonna win by just bursting your opponent down. It's going to be like some of a slow attrition war. But I can definitely see like where you're coming from. If you attack the armor smith with your Twilight Drake, um, you your opponent, like he doesn't get... Instead of getting five armor, he gets four armor. So they're almost kind of equivalent plays, actually. Yeah. Attacking face with Twilight and attacking armor smith. And uh, basically, like attacking face gives you... Um, it leaves your Twilight Drake up to three health, but I guess that doesn't matter too much, so... Very similar, I would say. By the way, there is Grumash, so there is still a chance for Ecop to win. Um, he used Double Taskmaster as well, uh, but he has the Warsong. Hmm. It is tough. Yeah, you, Warsong to give your Grom charge, right? I think you do play the free free here. <laughs> you play that Corsair, because yeah. uh, if there is a simple Mortal Coil, like, you don't even win with this. This is 16 points of damage after Grommash is being played. Yeah, like we said, like, just the win conditions are kind of gone for Ekop. Not really great options at all. And all at right. this point, like, you can even afford to play Dr. Boom. And then taunt that, um... I guess you can't taunt it up because you've already used your Sun Fury. So being Tyus, what are you afraid of? Uh, there is Grommash, let's say, right? You're, you're, you're afraid of you're afraid of Grom. You're afraid of Doctor Boom because those are the, like the last big threats that a patient warrior can possibly have. So as long as Tyus plays well around both of those cards, I think he'll be in an okay position. Well, we've seen him playing greedy before, and not accounting for the the burst, and then we've seen him playing kind of greedy, but like correct. But still, Tys has so much heal in his hands. He has a heal bot, he has um, Defender of Argus. He has Jaraxxus if something go goes bad. I think killing the minion is always good here. And now if he thinks about Grommash, it's 14 points of damage. And the question will be, can Ecop deal 3 points of damage from empty hand? Also, like even if uh, if Ecop gets Grommash and goes for face, Tyce will not be able to play Draxus because he's just yeah. dead to Grom, right? Yeah. Um, even though Tyce has seen both Cruel Taskmasters, 
there's still the possibility of uh, inner rage in a cop's deck. So he could potentially have 16 burst damage from his hand, and yeah. that's why he didn't want to go Draxus on that turn. That makes sense. Uh, by the way, right now we are also facing a situation where Tice can actually burst Ecop next turn. I is there enough damage to do so? If the bombs hit face. Alright, so Dr. Boom and Dark Bomb is 10 points of damage, right? So he needs 7 more. Yeah, but this board is going to be completely clear this turn with the executed. Uh... Yeah, but if the bombs hit face for 8. Okay. True. So there is a Grimash on board. Oh, oh he gets a Molten. A Molten That's is a good one. great. So you can Molten, Shadow Flame it, and then Heal Bot. And then I think you're like out of range of everything. What about just silencing Grum? Um, can you can you do that? So you basically play Molten, you play the Heal Bots, you silence Grom. Hmm. I think this is one of those uh, situations where it's so important to keep track of what your opponent has played so far. Yeah. Like, did my opponent play both Executes? Did he play both Patrons? Uh, did he play any Warsong Commanders? Did he play uh, um, any Farthing Berserkers yet? Those are all so impactful. What do you think about just Molten Giant, Silence Grom, and then Defender Vargas? It's like yeah, six that's, points that's, of mana. that's also very good because there's very little ways for your opponent to get past like that those taunts. There's actually no way for Grim Patron to get past taunts. I Besides think second execute was used, right? Yeah, and commanding shouts. Yeah. He might still use the heal bot, but I, I would really love to take the risk here and go with Defender Vargas. And then use uh, Draxus next turn. Is he going to get roped? Nope. Okay. Uh, he managed it. He ma he goes. Oh, there's the last card for Ecop. So Ecop is out of cards. Can Ecop go f through this board setup? But there's Draxus. Drax is going to seal it. Oh man, Monk. Yeah. Tice can actually... dismantled Ecop. Oh man, yeah, he can charge through everything, but how, what good does that do, right? Oh, he can actually charge a Warsong Commander. How sweet is that? <laughs> yeah, it's actually pretty good. Uh, he actually does need to charge the Warsong Commander in order to kill this Molten Giant. I wonder, so if um, if he clears, can he clear this and uh, not take that much damage? He needs 5. Yeah, he can basically almost clear. L leave something like a 2 free on board. Yeah, and then there is Jaraxxus, and he needs 15 points of damage. <laughs> yeah, good, good luck, Echo. Four. Good luck. Basically, like after this turn, what will basically happen is um, Tice can just never play any cards. He, he doesn't even need to play Infernals and he'll win this game just by using his Draxus weapon. True. Alright, so Ecop not able to attack with the second war song, but then there is Jaraxus. Five points of damage. Maybe even Healbot. I like Jaraxus here. Yeah. I like, like Jaraxus killing the two free. And then you are what? You, you've seen like all the cards, right? Like you know that there is, maybe even if there is Ragnaros, let's say, or Doctor Boom after Draxus, you're still in a good position, right? Exactly. I th I think uh, Tice was very comfortable after he drew the big game hunter because that means like even if his opponent ran Doctor Boom or even if he runs the very rare Ragnaros and Patron Warrior, which we've pretty much never seen, like he's not going to be able to win this game. Oh man, another close game actually. This was really close, like getting to the, the last cards. I was just going all in with the BGH. Ecop not really having any options, taking fatigue damage. Not, it's not like he's going to draw anything. Yeah, exactly. And unfortunately, like the patron warrior is fatigued out. He can't do anything. Ecops is kind of just smiling at his luck right now. Yeah. I bet he's thinking to himself, ah, oh, never lucky. I drew, drew through my entire deck and I wasn't able to take down this handlock. And actually, you know what? It was kind of a close game. Um, I think it, it all went down to like Tice drawing both his Hellfires, 
he draw fairly he drew fairly well drew into all his threats um all his answers and pretty much yeah tice does it and uh it's actually going to be two challengers are going to be two uh hcc sponsored players so hcc players not doing too well in this in their own tournament lately oh yeah unfortunately um yeah but then uh, tice advances um as you said and ecop is eliminated Maybe he didn't draw that um, the, the war song uh, at the right time, but overall, I think uh, really well played by both players, and um, I, I enjoyed that match. So we will have Forsen versus Ties tomorrow. Um, an amazing match. It will be cool to see those those players face each other. And the next match is Savit versus Hyped. Savit from Team Liquid and Hyped from Team Temple Storm. Who yeah, do you think is going to take it? Well, that's the next match in the bracket, but. I think we have to double check on what the actual next match is. Um, it's actually it's gonna actually gonna be tied to time versus delay. It's gonna oh, be game yeah. three. Oh, it's Savitz. Okay, so actually it is gonna be Savitz versus Hype. Sorry, we just got word from production that um, the European or like the European players will tend to play first because uh, it's probably like too late for them later on in like five or six hours, right? All right, guys. So if you're hyped for the um, European player hyped versus Savitz, um, stay tuned. We're going to go for a short break right now, but then we're going to get back and see Savitz versus hyped, Temple Storm versus Team Liquid.